WKDW 97.5 FM and KDWRadio.com. You are listening to Chat with Pat, and I am your host, Pat Petersmark. This morning, I would like to welcome my guest, David Ayanada. Uh, David, you're, you're very knowledgeable about the history of Warm Meadow Springs, so I'm excited to have you on my show today. Well, thanks so much, Pat. I'm excited to share a little bit of the history of Warm Meadow Springs. It is a truly fascinating place. And, and I know, um, I read, you know, some of your emails, and you certainly know a lot about the history of it, you know, the ancient and geological. So uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about the history of Warm Mineral Springs? Yeah, so, you know, Warm Mineral Springs, it, it does have this ancient history. Um, the springs itself, it was originally a collapsed sinkhole, and that's believed to be around 20,000 years ago. And uh, water levels would have been lower at the time, so to actually access the water in the spring back then, you would have to lower yourself down into it. And um, so it was basically somewhere that um, placed to scene man or uh, early man they have evidence of actually used to use and utilize about 10,000 years ago. Uh, so really a, a fascinating um, freshwater source that, um, you know, dates back uh, millennia. Wow. You know, I can remember years ago when they used to have uh, the National Geographic magazine. I can remember, and this was years ago when I lived in Michigan, reading about Warm Meadow Springs, you know, never realizing that I would live so close to it. Yeah, so, you know, it kind of took on the modern-day life that we know or we're more familiar with, probably started in the, the 1940s, around 1946, it actually became a, a destination that was marketed for bathing. And um, one really fascinating thing we can uh, all look at is Sarasota County has um, 1948 aerial imagery of the area. And if you look at Northport, it is completely undeveloped. Um, but you can see that at Warm Mineral Springs, there is uh, there are roads um, leading to it. So some of the very earliest development in the area was at Warm Mineral Springs, and that is again because it was uh, basically a, a roadside attraction, a um, bathing destination, and it was uh, marketed as such. So the earliest development in our area uh, that, that we know is Northport really would be because of Warm Mineral Springs. And at the time, if you were to look at that um, 1948 aerial imagery, you'll see Tamiami Trail, which looks like a, a dirt road. Um, and you'll see a couple of roads going into the spring and, and really not anything else in the area. So that's when it really kind of started its uh, modern day life. And um, after that, uh, in the 50s is when the discoveries um, started being made there. A man by the name of uh, Colonel William Royal was really someone who was uh, integral to the whole story of uh, Warm Mineral Springs. He wasn't a true um, certified archaeologist, uh, but he was a, a real avid uh, amateur diver, a scuba diver, and this is in the early days of scuba. And he made some remarkable discoveries in the late 50s at Warm Mineral Spring. Um, this would have been around 1958-59. Um, he actually found human remains there that were dated 10,000 years back. And those remains at that time were actually the oldest uh, intentional uh, burial site for a human in, in North America, in eastern North America. So it was really a, a substantial find that, uh, you know, he originally made there. And uh, there was some doubt in the community, the uh, archaeological community, if it was uh, a valid and within a few years, they basically confirmed that all of his finds were valid. They used carbon dating technology and so forth to, to verify well, think, that. You know, that is so interesting. I didn't. Um, I didn't even realize we had scuba divers there. Yes, yes, uh, extensive diving. Um, he he really started it in the late fifties, um, and then state archaeologists uh, did come in later, and there was verification of the work he had done before them. So. There was really um, a lot of finds at the site that really altered the entire timeline of, of what um, you know archaeologists thought about when people were in the area. So it was really uh, important work he did, and initially there was skepticism of the work he was doing, uh, but it was later um, verified and collaborated by 
uh, state archaeologists and um, PhDs and so forth, um, that this discoveries he had made there, um, you know, were in fact true and really changed the whole timeline of what we thought in regards to when people were in the area and uh, really fascinating stuff, evidence of mastodons, um, saber-toothed cat, animals that are now extinct, um, they actually were removing from the spring. So really, really a fascinating story. Um, around that same time, the spring itself uh, being a bathing destination, you had the promotion of it as um, basically the true fountain of youth, the fountain of youth that Ponce de Leon, as the story goes, was seeking in Florida. So there's kind of this, you know, two different histories going on there. There's these amazing geological discoveries being found, and then there's the marketing and use of the springs as a, a bathing destination and a attraction. I've read a lot about Ponce de Leon and, you know, his adventures and uh, a lot that he had to say about the springs. But it, it's so interesting to, to learn all this because a lot of us, we don't know the whole history of it. You just kind of move here and you love it, but you don't know about it. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, there's there's a lot of history there. There's a lot of different veins it takes, so to speak. And, um, you know, when I first moved to Northport back in 2005, I had no idea about any of the history of the springs. And there's actually three actual similar um, geological features in Northport. Warm Mineral Springs would have originally been called Big Salt Spring because there's another site called Little Salt Spring that's not far from the high school that actually formed in the same manner. It was a collapsed sinkhole, uh, also evidence of early man there. And there's another smaller site that's even more obscure called Nona um, or Coco Plum Sink. So there's three of these uh, very interesting geologic features in Northport um, that um, a lot of people aren't aware of. And it is very fascinating stuff, both from a, a cultural standpoint and an archeological standpoint. Um, the evidence of, of early man here, um, the evidence of the extinct animals. And um, we're, we're really extremely fortunate in that there's um, another source that we can look at that's also fascinating. And that's, I would say, probably the oldest historical written documentation of Warm Mineral Springs. And when I first found this, I was you know very surprised by it. Uh, but this would have been in uh, a book um, that was published in 1875. Uh, by a man uh, named Townsend. Um, the book is called Wildlife in Florida. And essentially it's a uh, him recounting his uh, expedition and adventures in Florida where he comes to, um, among other things, hunt, um, primarily hunting expeditions. And he actually goes down the Mayaka River in 1874 in a cypress canoe um, with a couple, a guide, a local guide, and a, a couple other people. And they actually um, talk about finding um, the channel that comes out of um, Warm Mineral Springs into the Mayaka, and they canoe up that channel, and they actually describe seeing Warm Mineral Springs. So we have an 1874 account of seeing Warm Mineral Springs. <clears throat> really, you know, just amazing that we have that. And they mentioned seeing um, panthers and black bears. Just just amazing stuff. Wow. Yeah, and, and that is so much uh, of history. I, I love history anyway. In fact, I was telling one of my sons who I was interviewing today, and he said he remembers reading a lot about Warm Mineral Springs just, in, you know, years ago. And he thought it was written up in some of the Louis L'Amour books. I don't know if it was or not. But he was very familiar with this, which surprised me since they're all in Michigan. So. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. I, I wasn't aware of um, those accounts of it. I, I'd love to learn more about that. So, yeah, it's just, you know, very surprising, um, kind of fascinating to, to be able to look through someone else's eyes at how the land must have looked um, way back in 1874. Uh, of course, there was very little at the time here in terms of what we would recognize as, you know, modern development or infrastructure then. So, um, he also talks about seeing flamingos on the lower Mayaka River. So, oh, just, wow. just, yeah, fascinating stuff and uh, really a great read. Um, and if any listeners are interested in that, that book, because. What, what's the name of the book out, again? Yeah, um, it's called Wildlife 
in Florida, and the author is Townsend, and that's T O W N H E N D, Townsend, T O W N S H E N D. And that book, because it is considered to have um, uh, immense historical and cultural value, is actually freely available online. If you Google search for it, there is a high resolution scan of it on the internet, which you can download. Um, and I believe it's chapter eight and nine that specifically talk about um, the Mayaka River and um, Warm Mineral Springs specifically. So just just fascinating to think that we had uh, panthers roaming around and black bears at Warm Mineral Springs and uh, must have been a truly, truly beautiful uh, unspoiled place then and uh, just great to be able to actually read about it um, back that far. So really amazing. Yeah, I'm going to try. I'm, the library, I'm guessing, would probably have that the book. Um, I'm going to start there because I try to make it easy for me. And I, that's very interesting. I would love to read that book. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And, uh, you know, Warm Mineral Springs, it has all these different aspects to it. You know, it's something that a lot of people hold very near and dear to their heart because, you know, they swim in it and they, they believe it has um, these healing powers. And um, it, it's very important to them. And then you have people who, you know, are just amazed by the archaeological history there, um, this evidence of early man. Um, so it's got all these different um, features to it. It, it is also, um, of course, a warm water spring. Um, my understanding is there are actually more than one vent uh, that feeds the spring. Um, one is actually hot. So by the time these different vents combine and get towards the surface. It's about 85 degrees, the water, and that water um, spills out down into what they call Warm Mineral Springs Creek, and because it's warm water, of course, we have manatees in Florida. The manatees use that creek as a warm water um, winter refuge, so when it gets cold, they actually come up Charlotte Harbor, they go into the Mayaka, and they make their way up that little channel under 41 into that creek that um, Warm Mineral Springs is actually outflowing into the Mayaka. So it's really an amazing place, and uh, it's just got a lot of, uh, you know, fascinating history and uh, from a standpoint of um, human history and also from um, an archaeological standpoint, um, it, it's just a fascinating place. Well, I know a lot of people really do believe in the health benefits from it. And, in fact, I have two neighbors, she and her husband, were going there uh, as often as they could. And I would sometimes see them walk by, and she used a walker. But after she'd been over there, she didn't use it for a few days. And uh, a lot of people just swear by that. Yes, that's, that's very true. Um, you know, the history of spring use is, is something that dates you know, back thousands of years in human history, of course, in Europe uh, before here. And um, there are a lot of people in Europe that are aware of Warm Mineral Springs. It's a, it's a very well-known thing. So Northport has a large Eastern European population, and, right. and a lot of that is due to the spring. Yeah, whenever I have visitors, we always, because I don't live far from there, we always drive by so they can see it. Most people have already heard about it, which surprised me. So, have yeah. you heard about that before you moved here? I, I had not. Um, I, it was it was new to me. Um, I find Warm Mineral Springs very interesting in that it's not even in Florida a, a very well known place. But as you said, people from uh, different areas are aware of it, and people in Eastern Europe are aware of it. And there's um, I think a connection um, in Sarasota County history between the Chicago area, the Upper Midwest area. Um, some of the people who originally uh, were key players in, in founding uh, Sarasota County, um, people who had early cattle operations, um, they actually drew a lot of people from that area down to Florida. So you have, you know, an Eastern European connection there. You have a connection um, from the people that originally were uh, instrumental in founding Sarasota. Uh, you know, it, it really speaks to how um, – you know, we don't exist uh, kind of on our own outside of the context of history. All of these things that come for us uh, really have a, an active part in where we are today. So history is a, a living, breathing, dynamic thing that, you know, we really um, can learn a whole lot from. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people 
you know, when they're going through grade school and so forth, think history is what four years was this particular person a president? And and that's all they, you know, think of history. Right. This memorization of dates and times. And of course, it's really much more than that. It's the whole story of, of humanity and, and everything that we've been involved in. So, um, you know, it's really fascinating to look at, uh, keep using the word fascinating, but it truly is. You know, I mean, Warm Rose Springs is a very, very interesting place. It has um, different facets to it. And, uh, you know, the, the exposure um, in places where you wouldn't expect it, um, just something that's really noteworthy. Well, I, I've always loved history, and I remember when I moved down here, which has been about 21 years, I knew Warm Mineral Springs was in Florida, but that's all I knew. I had no idea it was in Northport when I, I bought here, and once I found out, I could hardly wait to go over and see it and, and read, you know, as much as I could about it. Sure, sure. Yeah, and you, you find that a lot of people maybe have heard of um, Silver Spring, and maybe a lot of people know about Rainbow Springs. Uh, but not everybody knows about Warm Mineral Spring, and not everybody knows that, you know, because it's a warm spring, that's unique in the state. And, you know, the, the majority of uh, all the springs in Florida are about 72 degrees, um, which is kind of warm. Yeah. Um, but for Florida, it's kind of cold, too. A lot of <laughs> shudder at the idea of getting in 72-degree water. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Warm Mineral Springs, right around 85 degrees, and um, you know, one of the other things that's interesting, I guess, to note, and it seems really unusual, um, the description from Townsend from 1875 of Warm Mineral Springs, he actually decides, for what reason, I'm not sure, I guess maybe just curiosity, he puts a thermometer into the spring, and he notes it as being 90 degrees. So that's a very curious and interesting thing that, that he did that and wrote about it. Um you know, um, why it's a little bit cooler now. I think there's probably some geological um, answers to that, and there's people who investigate those kinds of things that look at, like, the health of the spring. Um, I really couldn't speak to the specifics on that, but just really interesting that not only does this person, you know, take a, a canoe down to Mayaka and find the spring and describe how it looks, uh, but he also decides he's going to take the tem uh, temperature of the spring. That, that is very interesting. I like that. I didn't get a chance to look at it very much, uh, just for a second, but you sent me a Florida memory picture? Yes. Uh, what was uh, that, that all about? I took a quick look, but I didn't have time to really read it. Yeah, so Florida Memory is a website that um, basically has archival photos of Florida, and these may be almost any topic. Um, they could be library cards and city records, but of course lots of it is also photography, and it could be any topic uh, of photography, events that ha were held, so forth. And um, that particular picture I sent is from the book Wildlife in Florida, and it is a engraving um, that was done to show um, what their camp looked like, um, the Townsend's camp looked like when they were exploring the area. So it's just this beautiful um, drawing or etching. It's actually an etching, I believe, that shows this real wild Florida scene uh, of them making their camp um, while they were exploring the Mayaka and Warm Mineral Springs area. Um, Really fascinating stuff to, to look at and imagine you know, what the Mayaka River looked like. Of course, the Mayaka is a, a somewhat protected river. It's uh, also right. unique in, in that sense. It's called a wild and scenic river, which is a state designation. Um, it, of course, would have been even more wild and scenic way back in 1874. Uh, but uh, just, yeah, it's a, uh, I guess you could say it's part of that book. It is included in that book. So if anybody wants to see that, um, of course, they can, you know, find the book or um, download the book because it has been scanned, or they can go on that Florida Memory website, and for a search term, they can just put in Warm Mineral Springs, and that will be among the um, photos that comes up. But there's also lots of delightful photos of people in the 1950s bathing at the, the spring. Um, so there's there's lots of stuff there if you're interested in learning more about the the visual history of the spring, you can see lots of great photos um, on the website there that um, the state of Florida, I believe, uh, maintains that website. And you can see, um, you know, from the 50s and 60s and so forth, uh, pictures of bathers and people at the spring. 
You know, I wonder in our schools here in Northport if they, you know, include this in any of history they might talk about. Sure. Well, I would hope so. I mean, our, our I went to the, the, my first thought yeah. is, I, yeah, I'd love for kids to know all the history of this. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's amazing. You, I'd imagine growing up here, um, you might think, or even living here, you know, I've been here almost 20 years myself now, you might think we're kind of isolated, and then you learn this history, and it's like, wow, like, you know, there have been people here for thousands of years, and it, it's truly fascinating to, to see that uh, archaeological story, uh, which gets very detailed, different different divers and people coming in, uh, but, you know, there's there's lots of discoveries at these, these different sites in Northport that, um, you know, show that there have been people here for going back to about 10,000 years ago. Um, so that's really interesting. And then the, his, the modern day history of the Springs is, is also fascinating. Um, believe it or not, in, in 1960, when Florida was celebrating its uh, 400th birthday, its quadricentennial, uh, that was a big, uh, a big deal, of course, for the, the state. And they had three different sites that they designated as um, uh, kind of big event centers for this 400th year celebration um, of the state. And Warm Mineral Springs was one of those locations. And uh, you can look through the historical clippings, the newspaper articles um, from that time frame, 1959, 1960, and you can see preparations being made at the uh, spring. Um, one of the buildings there that has uh, – a lot of historical significance is called the cyclorama, and that kind of tells the, the story of the spring in this um, artistic um, circular building that uh, had lights and audio and 3D figurines inside of it. And that quadricentennial celebration, I believe the article I remember looking at uh, from the newspaper back then drew about 14,000 people, which wow. in 1959 to this area is is absolutely exceptional you know i mean it's just it's truly um there was very little in this area at the time so for that many people to come and see it uh, really a big event you got 30 seconds pat i kind of thought so all right thank you so much david ayanada for being my guest on chat with pat and i really appreciate the history of all this thanks for listening and bye for now take care abc news i'm jim ryan